Hello, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Captain. So, today I'm going to be reviewing the Ram 2 Premium Tier 5 Medium Tank. This is uh, in, in, along in the U.S. line. Let's see here, it costs 815 gold pieces to unlock. And primarily, right now, I'm using it to... Well, I used it to, to get through the M3 Lee and level up my crew a little bit faster. And now I'm using that on my M4 crew. So getting onto this tank, the, the main thing is to differentiate this tank from pretty much the the other medium, um, the M4, is the the hit points and its gun. Uh, it kind of separates it quite quite good. The hit points are at 610, which is almost like 150 higher than uh, the M4 or a Panzer IV. So it can actually take like like a shot and a bit more than most other tanks at the same tier that are medium tanks. It's not the heaviest tank in the world at 27 tons. The engine power is okay. It's not great. It only gets to up to about like 35, maybe 40 kilometers per hour, which isn't really super fast. Um, that's why I took off-road driving because when I run into a swamp or something or I'm running on grass it, uh, it it goes even slower so I'm just trying to do anything I can to try and make it turn better the traverse speed is okay uh, it's not the easiest tank to, to try and drive around like and, and try and do a carousel against a, a slower tank it, it will work but it uh, the M4 or like a, a T-34 would do a, a much better job of doing so. One thing it does have up on the, the, the Sherman and I don't know, pretty much any other medium tank I can think of is uh, in tier five is the armor. It has 76 frontal armor with a fairly decent slope on it. However, it can be perforated pretty easily a lot of shots end up going in through here and killing your driver. Your driver dies in this thing like every three or four, every third game kind of thing. So one of the things that I did is I got jack of all trades on my Sherman driver. So because originally this crew was actually my Rams crew because I didn't understand how the premium tanks worked when I first bought it. It was one of the first tanks I got that was a premium tank. So... I have Jack of All Trades, which lets the commander kind of take over the role of any other injured or killed tanker on the tank. So the armor is okay. Uh, the turret armor is pretty okay. If it gets hit in the, this plate here, it has a better chance of deflecting off than if it hits in the flush part here, which is basically straight on. So it's hull armor and it's turret armor are pretty okay. Um, even it's side armor isn't too bad. Moving on to the gun. Uh, this is... Uh, if you like playing the T-34, you'll probably understand how this tank works a little bit better. Um, you kind of have to get up close a lot more than the T-34 because the, the accuracy in this gun isn't great. It's the same as on the M4 Sherman, uh, 0.43, but the damage is really not very great. It only does 75 damage, which makes it a little bit a little bit hard to, to really do a whole ton of damage sometimes. You do have to get close, and when you do it close, you're going to get shot more. Um, in some of my replays I'm going to be showing later, you'll see that you kind of have to engage closer to, to get the shots in because the gun is pretty inaccurate even though it aims down quite quickly and it reloads like a, a mother trucker 26 rounds per minute. The best thing about the gun is the penetration at 105 and then 170 if you really need to penetrate like against some of the Excelsiors or the, the Churchills or the KV-1s. You can kind of toe-to-toe -to -toe with a KV-1 as long as they don't penetrate every single shot and you're smart and you try and get around their sides or you aim at their plates and stuff where they are vulnerable. As you can see in my tank I have the camouflage 
and the Canadian flag because this is a Canadian trainer tank. It actually was never involved in the war, but I live in Vancouver and there's actually one of these tanks down by the armory downtown. So as far as I'm aware, it's one of the only, the only Canadian tank pretty much in the game until they maybe bring out like the, the Sherman Grizzly. I'm not sure what they renamed the Canadian tanks in the war, but yes. So rate of fire penetration, good for the gun. The alpha damage, quite poor. So you got to put in two shots to kind of equal one shot from most other tanks. The torturer speed is okay speed wise. It's nothing to, to really write home about. Your range is kind of poor. The Sherman can see 370 meters with its turret. This thing can only do 330. So odds are you're going to get spotted before you see them. So it's kind of best to be a second line flanker tank with this tank. Do not necessarily be the first one in. Let other players spot the enemy team and then either assist in kind of notching down the enemies with assistance fire, secondary fire, or flank around and try and get in behind and just pump shot after shot in from behind. Uh, the signal range is okay at 570. It's just average as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this tank, I put on the tank on rammer so it, it shoots even faster. Um, probably not completely necessary since the gun shoots really, really ridiculously fast anyway. I put on vents for 5% better crew skills and a gun lag drive so it aims a little bit quicker. One thing I found with this tank is even though it seems like it aims fast, it seems like it can't aim fast enough sometimes unless you're like point blank. And I run about, f sometimes I run out of ammo in this guy. So I run quite a lot. I run 50 normal um, AP rounds. And then when I run into tier sixes, uh, I pretty much need to switch over and get the higher pen to, to be able to do anything against them. So I run 15 premium rounds in this tank because for me to do any damage to anything, I have to hit them so many times. And if I'm hitting them, I need to penetrate them. So I run the regular module in here, nothing crazy for that. And yeah, let's get on to some replays. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a um, game I had on Himmelsdorf. Just a regular standard battle. I didn't go up to the hill because I find this tank isn't the best for the hill. And I managed to catch the Panzer 3-4 going on a hero run. He's going to ram straight into our SU-85 and take him out. So I got to try and get down here and cut him off before he takes out our artillery. There's also an M7 coming down there. Looks like he's going to kill him anyway. So I pop around the corner. Enemy is hit. Enemy armor is damaged. See some of these rolls are extremely low. 67 damage is it's pretty pitiful. The Matilda does 50 damage at tier 4. I kind of wish it did a little bit better damage that way. So I miss a couple shots on this M7. Trying to get him through the train tracks. Tracks take that one. Tracks take that one. <laughs> Still going though. And then I take 70 damage from a splash shot from the artillery. So I'm going to try and keep moving. And instead of just sitting there and giving them a expected target right in that corner, I decide to drive them kind of into the middle of the map here. And come around them from behind. And hopefully they're just sitting there thinking I'm over there. Then I run into an M3 Lee. He takes my track off. But he's dead now. 
And I'm assuming the other guys know I'm here. So I gotta come in. I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna keep firing on the move. I have snapshot with this crew, so my access to him when I'm driving around is pretty okay. So I'm just gonna try and keep moving around this M7. See, the turret traverse speed isn't amazing. I'm just gonna blast it out with the M7. Notice how none of his shots penetrated me. And then this guy, he was burning it on fire for a while until he managed to turn and then he died. And now the the guys on the hill completely just didn't bother paying attention to any of the tanks that came down tank alley, like down the the line where the, the KV-1 was last spotted there. And they're still not coming back. They're like, we're going to go try and cap. So it's pretty much up to me to, to try and knock the cap down. And there's two or three guys going to be in the cap pretty soon. So I've reset it twice now. There's the driver dead. This is where our team goes fail sauce. I don't think both of those guys are actually in the cap. They're like getting killed by the artillery point blank. So I should have maybe paid closer attention that my driver was dead. I was having a lot of trouble getting this tank turned around. And I wasn't able to actually get out of here soon enough. But they had three guys in the cat. My team really failed out and it was pretty much just me versus all their heavier tanks. So that was a, a pretty decent game. Not the best game in the world, but um, you can kind of see how fast the ram can shoot. It is fairly mobile and it's competitive against tanks of its own tier and lower for sure. And it looks really cool with the that, that kind of camouflage on. We all are, here we are on Lakeville. This is an encounter battle. And I don't like going into the valley with the ram. It's a lot better to go into the town. Where you can be close up and you can use the buildings to flank the other tanks pretty easy. Its turret armor is not ultra ultra strong. So poking over the top of the valley isn't a great idea anyway. So the enemy team is already in the cap zone. Except for the T-34 that just left. And again, it's like the last game. First hit killed my driver. And this tank just shoots and shoots and shoots. Like, you gotta really pummel the enemy and don't stop shooting. So I heal my driver to get the mobility back. Even though Jack of all trades is pretty decent, I can still drive around kind of okay. So this is where I'm going to try and not just drive straight at the enemy. I'm going to try and creep around the side a little bit. And I almost have shots on their artillery. But this stupid fountain gets in the way. That's where the accuracy of this gun is a little bit poor. But he dies in a second anyway. So, took out the panzer. And I don't know why their artillery decided to go into the cap zone, but he did. So I take out the cover there so there's nothing else to hide behind. And now it's time to give the Churchill care package. 
and we've pretty much decimated the town. And there's not much point sitting in the, the cap. We might as well just obliterate their team. Critical hit. They're knocked down. So there, you don't even have to wait for the, the gun to aim down, like the, the reticles. It gets so small so fast that you can kind of just, just shoot and shoot and shoot. So I know this M4 is coming, so I'm just going to pre-aim for him. And shot goes in, and he's already dead. <laughs> So now it's time to move up. And there's a T25 over there, but I already see a Stug, so I'm going to take some shots at him. Penetration. And I really thought I would get him with a blind fire shot here, but he managed to get out of the way by backing up some more. Penetration. Enemy is hit. And one more. Night -night. Gotcha. So, Stug dead. Things are looking up. So there's two heavy tanks in the valley, a T-14 and a KV-1. And a Hetzer, somewhere in there. So we're chugging a little bit going up the hill. You know, 20, 20 or so. And he happens to be AFK, which is nice. Off. And I managed to bounce. Penetration. Enemy armor is damaged. Enemy is hit. I do the majority of the damage there, and then someone kills him. I might have been smarter to wait and then get the last shot, but winning's more important to me than shooting AFKs. So this guy looks like Enemy pretty stock. So, shot even went through the bottom of his turret. But I'm going to be a little bit careful. Who knows what could happen, maybe he's, he's a good player. So I'm just going to sit here. See what he does. Now there's a few tanks shooting at him. <laughs> including both our artillery. So. I decide to go for it. Take his flank and just start shooting. And he's done. So that's what a, a five kill game looks like in the in the RAM when you you're not necessarily the the guy who's taking the brunt of the damage because the armor isn't fantastic but when it can it it can shoot its way out of out of out of its problems so we'll jump on to the next replay hello hello so this is arctic region standard battle i've gone over with our kv1 our soon to be dead M4 who just kind of drove right into the middle of the, the valley and sat there like an idiot even after we told him to fall back. He just sat there. I thought he'd derp his way out of the out of trouble or something. Enemy armor is damaged. Penetration. So two shots in there, not too bad. T28 down. Well, and I shot a fellow Ram. You don't see that many Ram 2s driving around, so it's kind of fun when you run into another Ram when you're in a Ram. And now there's an Excelsior that's pulled up. I'm just going to play it safe here. They happen to have a lot more tanks over in this area than we do. And the only other guy other than the KV-1 that seems to be doing much is the... The T28 here. Terrible accuracy again. That one, that one hit flush and went in. I just switched to APCR because his, his, his armor is too strong frontally. Ricochet! 
So now the Churchill and the T1 Heavy, they start pushing. And I really can't be the first tank here. The, the armor just isn't good enough, and I don't have the hit point pool to really sit here and soak up a whole ton of damage. They're keying on the KV-1. So I track the T1 Heavy and then start pulling back. And <laughs> hopefully the T28 decides to do the same. And this other T28, he's going to try and come around the corner. So I'm still reversing. Enemy is hit. We're on fire. And then he lights me on fire. The fire is out. So that was really bad luck. Usually this tank doesn't get lit on fire. It's not too bad for that. So i got to keep reversing and get over this hump or I'm going to be dead. And they're going to have free reign on our base. So I'm just going to keep firing the move while I'm pulling back. That shot totally missed. And I run into the rocks. <laughs> and I've got to try and get around this corner here. So I drive in between these two because the ramp's fairly skinny. And this saves my bacon. So I'm just going to sit here, try and cover this area. Because there is a T-49 and there's a tier 3 that's kind of beat up over there. So I just want to try and scout for the artillery. That one bounce. bounce a couple times. And these guys are... Oh, the T1 just got pegged by the T49. So I'm going to take this guy out because he's fairly low tier. He's gone. And he shouldn't have brought, gave me his broadside of his armor. And that T28, he has no armor. He shouldn't have been pushing up like that either. So that just leaves the T1 heavy. And I'm down to like no health now. So I decide a flanking, flanking maneuver back around the mountain is kind of what I'm going to try and do. But the T49, he's coming in for the kill here. I didn't quite notice until I was halfway around the the hill. But this one was in the bag and did a thousand and twenty one damage for a gun that only does seventy five. So it's fifteen hits in, which is pretty good. So you can see like the, the ram has enough hit points to to soak up qu quite a lot of damage. But it's frontal armor. You can see that my, in two of the games I had, whereas you need my better games, the driver dies a lot. He happens to be right in the front of the tank, and like he just every single time I have a, a, a good game, he seems to die. But yeah, overall, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's better than an M4 or a, a T34. It, it is a premium tank. It's probably not supposed to be better than any of the standard tanks. But in a pinch, uh, it is quite a lot of fun to play because it does shoot really fast. And if you play it the right way, it, uh, it's got enough hit points to stay in there and just kind of pair up with someone else. Preferably someone who's heavier. And yeah, it's a good secondary support fire flanking type tank that shoots really fast, got good hit points, and it's got decent mobility. And it's fun to play. And it's not too expensive to buy in the first place. So I hope you enjoyed the replays. And I'll talk to you soon.